everyone, this is your author, Brian McCumber, and today we're going to go over tagging coverage. It's the fundamental step that you need to implement in FinOps, and we're going to go through it here. Now, what you see on the screen is an example of what I put together for the Power BI for FinOps book. You may remember in one of the chapters related to tagging that you saw this example in one of the screens, and I actually had to go through and create. But what I want to do is actually take a walkthrough on what I actually did to create this because you'd be able to do it yourself. The whole point of this is actually to show you that you can actually create this yourself and you're going to see how easy it is to do. I can also look at the data that that's in here as well. So we got uh, a lot of data that's put together. This is the data that was imported in. We're going to go through a walkthrough example of it. And then this is the model that was put together. So the data model that was put together and you can see the relationships and the things that was gone through. Now, we're not going to be able to cover everything here today, but we're going to do some quick uh, relationships just to show you step by step on what you can actually do and achieve. So now what we're going to do is open up Power BI brand new session here and we're going to import the data. Now, I created mock data that's available here. So I have AWS Azure GCP, but today we're going to go over the AWS example. So I'm going to select AWS and we can imagine like this is an extract that comes out of uh, the AWS cost and usage report as opposed to just like directly connecting to Athena. It's a fairly large file. I want to say there's like uh, about 90 some thousand records that it's importing right now. Boom. OK, and we can see down at the bottom here, there's 91,000. 264 records so now we can accomplish the first step which is loading the data and now what we want to do is actually uh, make some preparations to transform the data and, and create some models to support some things here and as that begins to load we're going to create a new table within here we got this is the what's called using uh, dax queries to, to actually create the table and so that's that's the first step now as a next step that we're what we're going to do here is like we need to actually be able to take a count of how many product SKUs do we have we can see here uh 214 but we want to actually uh, make that available as a field that we can work with in the visuals so a way to do that is what's called creating a new measure so there's a thing here that's called create new measure and it's loading let's see here so we have it in here okay so now is a good first step we have product SKU and then now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to the model here and we can see that we have now we can see we got product SKU and then we have the AWS billing data now make this bigger so that we can uh, see what we got here. So we want to find the SKU. We want to actually make the mapping together. We want to show the relationship and that that's needed when you're using uh, the Power BI and the visuals so that the relationship of the data is tied together. So this is tying together the fact table. This right here, the AWS billing data would be the fact table. And then this would be an example of a dimension table. So you hear facts and dimensions. And what we're gonna do here is actually map this together. And I, all I did was just click and drag and then boom, it creates the uh, mapping and you can see how it does right there. And maybe one of the first steps that we're gonna do uh, just to see if we can get this going, which is the look and feel of it. So we're going to do this one here. So now we got a cool looking uh, visual and we'll go here. And then now up at the top is like establishing new visuals. I'm going to create this card. I just clicked on the button and now what we have here is like this visual where it's like a numeric visual. And what I'm going to do is just now select from the data that I did a count and drag this over and what do we got boom 214 resources uh that's now there as a visual so now we got that and it's uh looking pretty cool right we're gonna use this code here uh, and i'm just copy and pasting the save on time but i'll talk through it uh, so we're saying the resource tag for cost center and that's one particular tag that we're looking at and you know really there's a bunch of tags that could be within the within the the source data cost center is particularly one that's important because that's what ties you know your cost coverage to a particular cost center so this this would be a good example to to refer to um so i'm saying where the cost center is blank or is null or it's empty you know the tag doesn't exist so that's the first filter 
and then what we're going to do is actually have another counter to be able to count those rows so now when i click enter this should help generate that new table for us I want to create a new card here so i almost forgot we need to actually create a measure to actually count the untagged so let me do that right now and what we're going to do up at the top is create a new measure. And then with this new measure, what we need to do is we need to actually count of the untagged resources. So now if we go to the visual, now that we have that measured, so this is like creating the model and now the measures and, uh, and actually before, well, I can drag it in here and boom. So we have 207 untagged resources right there and then so the other thing that we want to do is like now we got another table that we actually want to map this together as well just to create the relationship so i'm going to take the product SKU and drag that to the product SKU right there and now it's doing the relationship many to one relationship to there so the fact to the dimension table uh so now you can see in our visual we already got two of these knocked out within a few minutes so we got the counter resources the number of untagged resources and now we want to do one more which is like what is our tagging coverage and so what we want to do is uh, create a new measure for that we want to create a, a tagging coverage uh, uh measure so we're going to click on new measure the new measure, the formula is basically taking the number of tagged resources divided by the total count of resources. That's the formula. And uh, so what we want to do is actually apply that here. And that's what this does. So this takes total resources minus untagged, and that gives you the amount that's tagged. And then you have uh, the divided by the number of resources. So now that we have tagging coverage, we go to here and we then drag this over to here and let me see i might be clicking too fast there we go boom now it says 0 0.03 tagging coverage so what we want to do is give it uh the look of a um, percentage click on percentage and what that's going to do is now formulate this into now that it looks like a percentage amount so now we can see here that we got 214 resources 207 of them are untagged and now we have three percent tagging coverage so that's really low i mean for an organization you want to get to 100 percent tagging coverage so it means that this organization needs help with their tagging process so hopefully this example was was helpful helpful for you here you know i actually went went through going through all all of this and you can actually see you know there's a further documentation that's in the book i say get the book if you don't already have it but another thing that i'm offering you is a chance to actually get the full version of of this example that that i've gone through here and I actually have the the mappings uh to go through so stuff the actual files that you can actually have on hand so you can have the one that i just went through right now but then also this one that has a complete version as well as the mock data to go with it so that you can now get hands on with this and to be able to create your own visualizations so i uh, just wanted to offer that off to you, but like you can see that using Power BI for your FinOps visualizations is really fast and easy. You know, everyone has access to the tools and, and basically just need the, the skills to do it. And hopefully this information was helpful to you. So, all right. I really appreciate your time today. Catch me in the next episode.